So Kent McLeod, thank you very much for um, joining me on the third part of discussing the gut microbiome. Uh, for those listeners who have not listened to the first two parts, I highly recommend that you do. And uh, so just a quick on Kent, he is um, the author of another book and he just put out the biology of the brain, how your gut microbiome affects your brain. And he's kindly um, also been discussing with me how it affects your bones. So Kent, on this section here, what I would love you to cover is what drugs affect the gut microbiome? Being a pharmacist, you know, you're, I mean, that's your world is drugs. So that's all. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the most, I guess the number three prescribed drug in Canada and the US is these tr class of drugs called proton pump inhibitors. And uh, it's recently been studied that as much as 90% are prescribed inappropriately off-label, meaning for the, they're, they're misprescribed. They're, they, they've been prescribed inappropriately. So and, meaning, that, like, and they're, they're used generally for digestive problems or heartburn, gas reflux, and they're super effective, but they're, so people are actually only supposed, according to guidelines, be on them for no more than two weeks. And that, those are the guidelines. And only in very, very narrow and specific indications. Um, and, and, you know, I could go on and on, or even about the other 10% of how inappropriate that is. Because again, as we're, even in this discussion, we're beginning to describe how, how refluxing is generally a symptom of the micro, a microbiome problem, right? So these drugs completely and totally disrupt the microbiome. So the, the first part of the microbiome, it's essential to have all this acid in your stomach because it, 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 that acid actually primes the pump when it releases into the small intestine. It primes the pump for, for your digestive juices, your bile release, which is your liver working correctly, your mm. pancreatic enzymes, and it changes the pH of your bowel. So when your stomach is completely shut down, there's no more, there's no more acid, it, it actually alters irrevocably mm. the structure of your gut microbiome, triggering more risk of C. difficile infections. Oh, wow. C. difficile infections, for example, oh, wow. kill 15,000 people um, a year in the US. And the only treatment is that really works is microbiome transplant. PPIs mm -hmm. interfere with the absorption of virtually all nutrients. And PPIs cause or osteoporosis, like duh, right? And kidney problems and so on. People aren't, and they actually, you know, when we compare in a controlled way, um, the number of deaths, people using PPIs versus not, the, the, the death rate is so significant that it's a, a hidden crisis. But of course, when I talk to people, I go, well, how do you die of a PPI? Well, you don't die of a PPI. You die of- Consequences. Consequences. You die of osteoporosis. You die of kidney issues. You die of a, uh, you die of a, uh, C. difficile infection, your heart, you, we, we know the connection to the microbiome, you have heart issues, your mental health issues, it just goes on and on and on. It's so, so seductive, you know, so sneaky that, you know, that people aren't aware of it. And again, when I, I, I was involved in a study in, with, uh, in Canada, in terms of not because of what I'm saying isn't true, but how are farm, can pharmacists alter this trend? Where I, I that's I what was, I was thinking. Aren't they asking people, you know, why are you still on this drug? So I was involved with four pharmacists. We, it was published in the Canadian Pharmaceutical Journal about how can pharmacists stop this? Mm. And the first barrier was, was, you know, all the traditional excuses, you know, not enough time, people don't want to do it, doctors don't want to do it, uh, no one's paying us to do it. But a real barrier is, is the fact that that pharmacists and doctors, I mean, they didn't even understand what I was saying, aren't, 
aren't taught like uh, to actually know how to heal someone's gut and repair the microbiome. It's, that's the real problem. Yeah. And, and, you know, that training is really usually found with a naturopathic doctor. That's what they're trained in versus a pharmacist who's taught a, or a doctor. I have a, you know, I have five minutes. I have a digestive problem here. Try this. See if that helps you. Oh, this is really good. Now you're on it for 10 or 15 years and you're getting all these problems that you're not even aware are linked and your gut doesn't get better as well it gets worse so it's 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 um uh, it's like a it's beyond a triple whammy it's a disaster right and and mm. and you can't get off them because your stomach is now so fragile that if you just withdraw it abruptly your stomach lining has is dependent on that acid to create that mucus barrier, that one cell barrier is dependent on that mic at acid to stimulate it. It's kind of like your hand, you know, if you never use your hand, your, your, your skin becomes paper thin. And then if you wash your hands with lemon juice and all the, you have these little cuts, it hurts like heck, right? It doesn't mean you, 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 you know, lemon juice is bad for you. It means you're the barrier, your natural barrier of your mm. skin is destroyed. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a real epidemic of trouble that's hidden because people, you don't die of it. You die of something else. So for the many people listening um, that are on PPIs, what is your advice to them? Well, I mean, first of all, can you get off it on your own? If you can't, I mean, just be aware, maybe tapering really slowly and so on. But I mean, if you can't, there's all kinds of really, like we use, uh, I design products, GI Rescue, Gastro Ease, there's a variety of products that will kind of ease, ease the transition. Um, so it's almost like a drug detox. It's like a drug detox. Yeah. And again, where you're moving towards is ultimately a healthier microbiome because that's kind of the ultimate repair, right? Is your, your, your gut chemistry is better and you're getting all these benefits to your heart, your liver, your bones, your, and you're not just, you know, so in the shirt, you know, in the one first case is stop, stop, stop it. On the other hand is move towards something healthier and, uh, you know, we've talked about that. So there are, in, there are products that we use that are transitional that help heal and repair the stomach uh, without actually, as you taper slowly the PPI. And, you know, generally I, I can talk about tapering because there's so very few cases where they should be in place in the first place, to be blunt. Where PPIs should have been in place, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another eye opener, Kent. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's an eye opener. And again, you know, in this study, it was getting very frustrating for me to say, well, you know, blah, 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 and go stop it. The people are dying from these things. Just figure it out, man. Like, like, let's stop. Don't do that. You know, like, and if it needs you to learn more about transition products or the microbiome or things to do, you that's part of then do it. Or team or partner with naturopathic doctors that know how to do it. But to, to just say, oh, well, you're, it's the way it is. Maybe, you know, stop drinking coffee. You know, everything's going to be, you know, or eating spicy foods or whatever. If you have to under get off of these drugs and there's ways to do it that actually not only will get you off the drug, but will improve your bone density, for example. I mean, where's the downside of this but awareness is a big problem isn't it it is yes um so can do you mind if i ask you so sorry i'm going to wrap up this little section um so thank you so much just in regards to the ppis big eye opener really appreciate it um i do have one other question and it's regarding um a mineral i guess it's a mineral it's an element strontium Mm. Um, so, and it's not necessarily, um, around the gut microbiome, but, you know, just in regards to bone health and then people getting 
information about their bone health. Um, so DEXAs are, you know, how people get diagnosed in the first place. And in studies, they'll use either DEXA or they'll use uh, PQCT, you know, quantitative computer tomography. Now, when individuals take strontium, and I brought it up only because a lot of naturopathic doctors uh, prescribe strontium, at least I'm getting that information from clients, you know, um, and so what the recommendation right now is, you know, is, is just coming out in literature is for people, they're being discouraged from taking strontium, even though the animal studies show that strontium really does fantastic things to bone, but that strontium can, you know, replace calcium in bone, they compete. And so if somebody has been on strontium for three years, you know, 1% of their um, skeleton might have been replaced uh, with strontium, but even that 1% under a bone mineral density test, gives an attenuation that shows that the bone mineral density is now 10% greater than it was. Um, and so, but I'm not convinced and I don't know that they know because the conclusion of a recent paper was that we don't know, you know, we need to, because what an, we see in animals or is it what we're seeing in bone and the strontium renolate that was, you know, in Europe has been discontinued at least temporarily because of um, cardiovascular concerns. Um, but do you have any, you know, information, any feedback, any, um, do you so I, I, one of the benefits of being an old guy is, is history. Yeah. So history, we, we thought we could make stronger bones with fluoride and many women were given huge doses of fluoride because they, yeah. on their bone density, they had significantly improved bone density, right? On these tests. So the gold standard was bone density. The bone density tests were Still significantly is. better, way better, like better than anything else. Oh, wow. But yeah, with fluoride, huge doses, like 20, 30 milligrams. We were giving 20, 20 to 60 milligrams a day in women for sodium fluoride for bone density. But we found the even though the bone density tasks, right, were way better, there was actually more fractures. You know what I mean? There was mm -hmm. actually, the bone was more brittle. So, you know, when, when I see strontium and we're, we're using another mineral, another halogen, see I'm a chemist to start trying to replace the structure, you know, to create a stronger bond than the, the natural bond of, cal of, you know, calcium phosphate. I'm very ca cautious, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very, you know, reluctant to jump into it. In, in and sure enough, my caution is often rewarded because people are going, whoa, it's not what we thought was going on. You know, really the best structure is the way our bones are made in the first place. You know, like, and you're going, okay. So, so I'm very cautious about jumping on something that's going to replace the actual natural structure of the bone of the bone versus enhancing through exercise and microbiome and all these things that are proven to make a healthier structure. You see where I, yeah. so I, I, I'm more, I am cautious. I look at the data, but I always have this background in my mind and going, Oh yeah, I remember, I remember how we all jumped on fluoride and every woman 40 years ago with osteoporosis was given sodium fluoride, a big doses, but, and it made better bones, like in terms of density, but oops, it was making them more brittle and prone to fracture. So we have, okay. yeah. so, you know, we have enough data to start jumping on another molecule that's going to make a better, you know, a better structure without actually being aware and, and of, what we're actually doing. So I'm, I'm just cautious, you know no, what I mean? Gratefully, I mean, part of the reason I asked you, because as I started researching it a little bit more, I noticed that Health Canada monitors water for strontium because, you know, they're going, oh, too much isn't a good thing. But yet there's supplements out there and they're really aggressively marketed. And they're like, okay, you know, so here's, you take your calcium, but then, you know, a few hours later, you take your strontium and then they're saying that, oh, our calcium is so good because 
look how it builds your bone, you know, when you have a bone density, well, it has nothing to do with their calcium. It has to do with the strontium. That I agree. Giving. And you, you, you're just pointing out to the fact that, you know, does a bone density reduce the risk of, you know, there's multiple f issues. That's why things that we know are so of, are, you're kind of going, okay, if I get data, it's something that's proven to, in, you know, to enhance structure of your bone through the mechanisms that are billions of years old. I think I like that versus something that's using a mechanism that we've already you know, making these stronger appetite crystals by substituting another molecule better than calcium, you know, fluoride or strontium. I'm kind of suspicious of what is that doing to our structure. And, and you know, it doesn't mean, and, and I'm right, you know, we rightfully so. If with any drug intervention, you have to, you have to have a background. And, you know, we had a lot of data on sodium, on fluoride, lots of data. Before it was. Compared to fluoride, compared yeah. to strontium. We had all kinds of data. And eventually it was like, whoops, you know what I mean? So why do we need a whoops? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just more, you know, so when people do that, I'm just cautious about that intervention, but higher on exercise and microbiome and, in, and me these types of things that have no downside before I jump into something like that. All right. Um, Do you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. That's just coming from pure, you know, sometimes, you know, you rely, I, my experience is going back to the raw chemistry of the appetite crystal is, is, is done me good, help me in good stead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, you know, making it bigger doesn't mean it's stronger. It's actually the opposite, you know? Yeah. You have to be, you don't know what you don't know when you start firing in stuff that's, that you think you're doing one thing, but what if you're doing something else? Yeah. Um, since we have, I just have a few more minutes before my next yep. client, but, um, would you mind if I asked you about boron? And I bring this up only because so many people, you know, like are, are just putting out these minerals out there and, and talking about them. And so you're the, really the person who understands things on a cellular level far more than anybody else. I think boron is something a little different than strontium. I think we're, again, you know, in terms of, you know, having a base amount of which is in our soil and plants and so on, you know what I mean? I don't see it as, I see it as just a, an adjunct. I don't see it as the be all and end all. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, um, you, you, I think the appetite crystal was designed to actually have a variety of minerals that come from the soil. Mm -hmm. that, that Magnesium and yeah. Magnesium and calcium and boron, all these things are more naturally occurring. You may, uh, will it change, you know, as you start getting doses to start trying to force a shift in the structure of the crystal? Um, I, again, you know, I'm, I don't want to rely on these types of approaches. As I say, I think that, that you and I have always, we wind up down the same roads because, you know, the only reason the microbiome isn't like front and center is just because it's relatively recent, you know, 10 years ago, we had like three studies. Now we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of studies. And we just know that the microbiome is in it has going to have, you know, if, if every animal study says, whoa, what a difference on, on gut structure. And it changes all the parameters that we know are crucial for bone. We can't underestimate the power. It's just that we don't have the, the magical, you know, it's not mainstream yet but even even fiber for heart disease is not mainstream you know what i mean it's even though it's well proven and so i i don't know i, I don't want to get down those roads okay. into no. those simple answers when the simple answers may be right in front of us you know what i mean yeah actually so what i'm really reflecting on everything we've been discussing you know i'm thinking if we consume a lot more fruits and vegetables to help our gut microbiome, will we not be getting the amount of boron and strontium? Ah, you see where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. And, and, you know, and, I, and, and yes, if I make, I make supplements and I put a bit of boron in it, just, but I, I, I'm very more, I'm more conservative for stuff like that. But really, I would emphasize, you're absolutely correct. You're getting all kinds of these trace minerals, which guess what? Make a, they're, they're important in the sense that they have, you know, we can't, you know, they have micro, they have, they may make a better structure. But as soon as you overwhelm a structure, what are you, what are you doing? We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, always so interesting to speak with you. I really, really appreciate your time um, and the sharing of your very deep knowledge in the chemistry of the body and, and now the microbiome. Yeah, no, it's as exciting. I, and it really, if I think every health professional eventually will be here, an assessment of this is, is as crucial as any, it would be the part of any assessment. End of story. Kind of part of like blood pressure and yeah. Yeah, it's just, Absolutely. yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's exciting times ahead in the medical field, as long as we're open to it. So. Well, again, either you're open to it or you've been living under a rock, meaning they, yeah, I get to kind of say that now, you know, where the literature is so significant that, you know, before it was alternative. Mm -hmm. Today, it's alternative if you don't know, if you don't know this stuff. Well, thank you for sharing it with more people so more people can um, be aware of this uh, direction yes. that medicine is moving in. And always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I think it's always, I always love how, how uh, we, we wind up going, you know, and you'll see this, right? The, the road to health tends to be crowded with the right people thinking the right way. You know what I mean? It's a good road to travel. It's a great road to travel. What other road is there, right? So true. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kent. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye, Margaret.